All right, guys, today we're gonna to talk about a knife that you probably haven't heard of. And if you are new to the knife world, or if you got into knives, or if you got into knives, um, you know, here in probably the last five, maybe four years, you probably don't actually know much about the knife that I'm holding. Now, I will say that this is a gravity knife and there was a gravity knife not too far uh, in the past known as the Riate Exo. And I think a lot of people, whenever really neat gravity knives come out, everyone's like, oh my gosh, have you seen that? And honestly, like the first gravity knife that I saw that was really cool was actually not quite the Phoenix, but the Paragon Warlock. Now the Paragon Warlock is essentially just like the knife that I'm holding here. The only difference is it is a double-edged dagger and the handle shape of course is straight um, or I should say like more of a uh, it's basically like this but to accommodate the double-edged dagger. So it's a little bit different but essentially the same core concept. Now when I saw the Warlock out there initially I wasn't a huge fan of it and I'm still not the largest fan of gravity knives personally but I was like man that would be really cool to add to the collection however they were not particularly easy to come by that is of course until they lost popularity like they are now and once again these are almost more like a relic of the past because most people don't even know what the paragon or Asheville steel warlock and or phoenix are so i thought i would do this video today because i managed to come across one this one i'm holding obviously for a good deal and i thought what the heck might as well pick it up because i've wanted one for a while and they're just really neat knives now i will say i am also a little bit partial to the phoenix itself when it came down to it the guy was actually selling a warlock and a phoenix and the warlock while cool and um, was unused technically it was it was pretty neat but i really do like the phoenix just a little bit more and personally i actually like the handle and this might be subjective some people might as i was saying you know with the riate exo out there kind of sparking the interest of gravity knives they have existed before and the warlock slash phoenix was one that i remember when i I was coming up in the knife world and I think it was around like 2014 2015 these guys originally dropped they were just always kind of out of touch and while they were never really like too expensive because they're I think like brand new like 260 bucks so not super cheap but also not super pricey especially nowadays it's actually kind of funny because you can still find a few of these guys remaining on like blade hq for 260 dollars so it seems like they're one of the few things inflation hasn't touched so if you do actually want to blast from the past and you don't want to pay for the Riate Exo, but still want a really cool um, gravity knife. Just a little uh, secret out there, Blade HQ still has some of these guys in varying uh, handle colors and blade variations. Now, some of them are a little bit more practical. Some of them just have the uh, you know main blade, and then some of them are like mine with the sharpened swedge, and some of them have a sharpened swedge without serrations, and then there's some like mine that have the sharpened upper edge with serrations. So anyways there's a few varietals out there on blade hq at least i didn't really look too hard to see um you know where all they were in stock but yeah so this is actually in my opinion um a really cool gravity knife especially because unlike the riate exo that's more of like a gravity otf this guy is almost more like a balisong so if you kind of want that balisong-esque feel of like flipping a knife out and flipping a knife closed this guy actually has that when you do it just right um, and once again with any gravity knife there is definitely a learning curve and uh, you do want to be cautious of course with a gravity knife that has a sharpened upper edge that you don't bite yourself as it is coming out of the handle anywho um, getting to the actual blade itself this one is they made a few different types but this one is made in s30v it's very hard to see but it is around there let me see yeah it's super hard to see it's like on this side of the wing it says s30v right there and of course paragon Asheville steel and of course this is made in the usa now mine is a bit of a user and an abuser but i don't mind because honestly this is a blade that for me i was largely getting because i got a really good price on it and ultimately too it's one that i think is just kind of fun to have the action still works perfectly on it it's just uh, the coating is a little bit scratched up and the blade has been sharpened before so anyways and to be honest too with these uh warlocks and phoenixes due to the nature of how they open and close 
I would not be surprised if any of them get scratched up because if you don't time this just right and say like you stop the blade right here, you're going to scratch up that finish if you don't close it just right. So anyways, uh, for me, it's inconsequential. I will say too, uh, to explain how the action works, because I didn't really do that. You basically have these two um, kind of grooved or textured buttons, I should say. You press those, that lifts up the handle slabs, and underneath here is where the blade is. And of course, you use gravity and some kind of wrist or hand motion to either swing the blade out or swing it closed. Now, of course, it is worth noting in the locked, locked uh, open configuration, this does have quite a bit of blade play due to the nature of the mechanism. That's not saying it's poor quality and this thing really can't physically close in on your hands because of how the mechanism works. And of course, if you do have a good grip on it, then you actually really don't have any blade play. But if you're just kind of holding it all willy nilly, there's a little bit of blade play in there. So anyways, that's due to how it works. But yeah, so you basically press down on these two that opens the handle up, allows the blade to come out. And then when it's closed, it's just like that. I will say too, there's something worth noting that if you play with it a lot, there will get some like play in the two handle halves. So it's something, once again, it's just more of like a nitpick. It's not really a big deal. And the blade or the handle does come correct. So anyways, just worth noting, um, as far as it goes, it does have a pretty long handle because of course this handle has to fully shield the blade so it does have a pretty lengthy handle for a you know reasonably sized blade but um, overall I think it's really cool and once again as I've said in many other videos I think it's neat that uh, in the state of Alaska we have pretty relaxed knife laws so carrying something like this is actually a possibility of course always check your local laws before picking up and carrying something like this you don't want to you know cop a felony or a uh, misdemeanor just for having a neat knife but uh, yeah it's a really cool blade I think if you, I was to go with one I would still go with the Phoenix again because I feel like the Phoenix is the more practical of the two the Warlock is a really cool idea because it has the uh, double-edged dagger and I might roll in a picture of the Warlock but uh, the Phoenix especially the Phoenix without any sharpened upper edge is really cool this guy I kind of got because once again I like the whole idea I think it looks cool and uh it does have that kind of cool ability that potentially if you did use it in self-defense you could flip it over to have the flat edge or you could flip it and have the longer normal standard edge so either way it is also kind of cool too if you got really good at deploying it you could like flick it out and already have it in ice pick grip too so i just play around with this thing honestly the fidget factor of really all gravity knives is super high but yeah i just like the idea that like if you're practiced enough you can flip it out immediately be an ice pick grip like that it's actually kind of cool the mechanism is pretty neat in that regard and you can do something similar with the riate xo with a lot of your gravity knives if you get used to playing with them you can uh, kind of flick them out in interesting ways so this is kind of what i would say like the closest thing to a ballast song without being an actual ballast song so if you also like that idea it's it's pretty cool too that being said i will probably still pick up a ballast song i really do like the Benchmade 53. It is a long since discontinued, but occasionally some of them pop up on the knife form. So I will probably end up picking up a Benchmade 53 at some point, but that's another video for another time. Anyways, yeah. So as you can see, this is a Manix 2. This is a Andrew Demko or 8020.5. So for some size comparisons here, this is the uh, Paragon. Phoenix, you can see that once again, it has a pretty comparable blade, a little bit longer than something like the Manix 2, but pretty comparable um, blade length, but way, way bigger handle length. Like we're talking maybe not way bigger, but definitely like at least a half inch, maybe three quarters of an inch longer. And uh, like I said, that's just kind of due to how it works in sheathing the knife, so to speak, or the blade. So anyways, pretty pretty unusual blade. I really like it from a collector's standpoint. I think it's cool. Is it a blade that I'm going to use, you know, every day of the week? Probably not. And is it one I'm gonna carry every day? Probably not, but it's one that I saw for a while. And for me, I liked it from a cultural aspect or at least knife culture aspect, because it's one of those blades that I saw coming up in the knife. I was like, hey, that's pretty cool. I'd like to get one of those one day. So yeah, that is the Phoenix Warlock and how I got one. Anyways, guys, as always, God bless and I'm out.